Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Talk Junkies, where tonight's going to be a very interesting night, as it is each and every single week here at the Talk Junkies household. We've got Johnny, Jesse in the house. Gentlemen, how are you doing? Sup's up. Doing Good. well. Good day. Uh, we took a week off last week. Uh, Jesse's getting very close to having a child be born into this crazy world that is going on. But Jesse, uh, here we are today. Uh, we took a week off. I can't exactly remember what we talked about the week before, but I'm sure it was interesting. So check the podcast out before <laughs> before last week if you want to just hear it out. I think it was about Elon Musk and uh, Jesus Jesus said, pay, pay taxes. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. the Jesus said to pay oh, taxes <laughs> and Elon Musk about to buy Twitter. That's yeah. what that was, was about. Was it the Easter Sunday one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where yeah, I, yeah. Where yeah. I, like, I shit on Christianity for like 30, 45 minutes? Yeah, yeah. That one? Okay. It, to me, it was just fascinating that Jesus said, hey, pay your taxes. And you got, you know what I'm saying? I, whether or not taxes are necessary, I just found it fascinating that Jesus was down with taxes. So if you want to hear about that, just tune into la- the, the the podcast that we did before, and you can hear our opinions on that. But tonight's going to be a very interesting night. It's been a while since we've had a guest on the show, a new guest. And, I, and I'm very honored to have this guest on. He's a gentleman who, in my opinion, is is putting his foot to the fire and, and holding uh, our law enforcement and our judicial system accountable for what it is to be human being and what it is to just live on this earth and what it means to be free. And I think we all think about those things and we don't really know what it means because we've been fed this propaganda machine ever since we were born. You're given a social security number without even having a choice in that. That's, you know, your parents have that choice and they give it to you. Most parents do. I would probably venture out to say 99% of parents do. And you just, you don't get an opportunity, but I, I'm just going to shut up and I'm going to let the guest who, who has more knowledge than I do talk about it. I have Paul on Slave. He has a YouTube channel. Check him out. Paul, how you doing, man? Hey, what's going on, Paul, John, and the other guy's name again? Jesse. Jesse. Paul, John, and Jesse. Yeah, so I might have to tune in for that one, man. I wasn't aware that Jesus Cristo was running around telling people to pay taxes, so I might <laughs> yeah. have to just tune in that one myself, you know? That was something I wasn't aware of, but... uh. Yeah, where do we where do we want to start? You want me to just kind of get into uh, what we people would know me from if they know me at all? And yeah, just kind of get into like what I'm up to. I was gonna say pre- pretty much just in case there's someone who's watching this who doesn't know you, like let us know what you're about, you know, or your channel, or like what's you know. How did how did it start for you, Paul? Sure. Man, like where did it all begin? Where did you when did you wake up to, and smell the coffee type of thing? Sure. So I had I've I've had what some might call a dark past, you know, an interesting. Um, upbringing in a sense uh that led me to question right to go deeply within try to understand myself better i always go back to knowledge of self is knowledge of the universe and then after realizing that a lot of the way that i was conducting myself was incorrect and out of line with universal law i started to go into what it was we thought we know about the world and everything in it right different psychology sociology banking systems uh, religious systems So, yeah, it's just been kind of a a lifelong path of seeking truth and coming to know more about myself. And as I said, therefore, universe and everything in it. And, yeah, if if people are going to know me, uh, it's probably going to be from interactions with the public servants. Um, Obviously, uh, if you haven't been living under a rock, uh, you've come to understand that we've pretty much been regulated out of all of our rights uh, whether it be the personage in quotes or the private property right. So I basically just bring awareness to the contractual system, not only of the universe, but of this country and every other country, because they are essentially corporate bodies, right? Groups of men and women who assemble in order to provide service for a payment. So the more awareness that we bring to this idea, right? I, I've been telling people lately now, go look it up. Your state of all caps names, right? The state of Kentucky, the state of Ohio, it has a Dun and Bradstreet number. It's in all caps, Capitus Diminutio Maxima. It denotes personage, corporate entity, and agency. These are all corporations. They're service providers. We're contracting into them to receive benefits and privileges at the exchange of our rights. And most folks are completely unaware of it, it seems. So that's what I'm pretty much uh, doing overall. And then, too, you know, um, when we get into conversations like these, a lot of times it gets more into the spiritual side of things, which I say is the prerequisite, right? It's the principle, the first things first. We have to live a spiritual lifestyle of seeking truth, and then we bring that to different areas, one of which being upholding the law of the land, right? So so can you go back a little bit, and let's talk about how, how states became corporations. Was that always part of the plan and, and a part of the, the, the Constitution, or was that something that happened over time? Well, a lot of the, the history there, I probably should know more, right? 
Um, I don't focus in as much on the histories as where we are today and how we go from there. I don't believe that was always the case. My limited understanding of it uh, is that at some point uh, we, we lost our lawful money backing system. Uh, we took on this legal tender system. Uh, at some point, the British accredited registry made its way into our country completely and now regulates and legislates. So, you know, the, the, the basic overall background to me is the idea that we, we essentially at one point fought a war against the British and the British system. Now we have the British accredited registry, the bar agency running our whole country, right? And using legal tender and debt notes and the legal society and legal system to overthrow our lawful rights. So I don't believe this was ever the intention. Uh, it may have been why a lot of the original founders did not sign the constitution because they were aware that at some point the corporations would uh, um, shoot up and start to subvert uh, different forms of, of self-government. Man, that's, that's almost, that's a curious thing to think. Did they have the, the whereabouts to, or, or the knowledge to look so far in the future to see this system becoming corrupt basically is what you're talking about. Well, the founders like, said, if you go look up the quotes, certain founders said that this country would last 250 years, most empires do, and that it would be destroyed from within by traitors and treasonous activity. And we're pretty much coming up on that timeline right now. I always say it, but I have to go look at it. I never wind up looking at it, but do the math. Someone go look it up uh, when the, the original constitution was ratified and do the math 250 years. I think we have four to six years left on that timeline. And I don't see that to be a coincidence. I see everything sort of happening on time along with the centralized digital currencies rolling in the collapse of the small business and the uh, uh, engrandizing of, of the big billionaire uh, corporations run by folks who seem to be lobbying with politicians to affect our free speech and a host of other rights. So it all seems to be happening to me on a timeline that almost seems to be divinely ordained. I believe that we do have choice but then again, there is sort of a timeline that plays itself out, a simulation, it would seem, a cycle. You know, that's what the word revolution means. I always talk about it. The word revolution means complete circle, to revolve. So these are, no, these are all words and terms that point to me that we are in some form of simulation, in some kind of cycle. And we have an ability to break that cycle. But what we tend to see throughout history is that's not the case. No, people don't usually, I mean, it is a cycle and people don't usually break it until they're I, want, I was going to say completely fed up, but honestly, you pointing out the whole 250 years thing and then looking at other empires that have fallen in the past by exceeding their grasp and all this different stuff, I see that happening, and it's funny that you talk. They also try to get us to believe that revolution and is, a, is a bad word. You know, revolution's a bad thing, or hey, that's, that's treason, or that's traitorous, or whatever, but I'm like, man, the only people saying that and speaking that into truth are the ones who, it hurts, the ones at the very top who get to make the rules in the first place and say, no, that's you being treasonous, even though they're actually the ones betraying their fellow man. And all of us are what the government is. You know what I mean? It's not just the legislative well, branch up here and the Congress. That's the government. Like we are all like we, the people, you know what I mean? Well, what it appears to me is at some point, And again, I like to go back to the idea of resolution versus revolution. If we are to speak from a place and a perspective, even though it, you could say it's legitimized, because the original contract between us and the public servant says the people have the ability to alter abolish this corporation any time if it becomes destructive of the original ends and means. But we can't speak from that because we understand that we live in a world where we will be set up as the ones who are the extremists, the violent ones, the ones who want to overthrow. They're already doing it with me now and others in Vice. They just did a Vice, quote unquote, documentary hit piece the other day saying this is a decade of hate. And all of us are trying to overthrow the government. So now my new thing is every time I come on one of these, I make it clear for the record. I'm not overthrowing Shaitan's spiritual system that is ordained by the Most High and how it expresses through each country. I'm simply looking for remedy and resolution in my own life and showing that to others. So I understand that everything has a purpose, form, and function, including evil and corrupt government. It's there to get good men and women active, willful, and disciplined and become righteous again, right? So again, this all works together to me from top down as a spiritual system, and it's choice-based. So I will never I will never speak the words of, of revolution because I'm not going to allow them to set me up 
uh, to be a martyr any any way more than they already will and have. And I also understand the Christ of being in the scripture said the pen is mightier than the sword, right? So I still believe we are in the time where we can use the word and the truth and the laws and we can go into court and bring claim and still get remedy, right? It's We're, we're getting to the point there where it, it may not be possible anymore, but there's still, I believe, the ability to, if we put ourselves uh, on the gears of the system, so to speak. And that's, I mean, that's a good, that's a, honestly, a really good outlook. And I wish I had more of that outlook because I see you being a more of an optimist about it. And I'm more of a pessimist about it. And it's just like that. You talk about like how we should be able to go through the courts, go through all this stuff. And I would love for that to happen. But then you mentioned the fact that we might be beyond that possibility, which is unfortunate. And I feel like we're there where we're beyond that possibility, but I would also love to be proven wrong. You know what I mean? You talking about resolution versus revolution. I would prefer resolution. I would prefer us being able to solve this civilly like adults and everything. People get their rights back and things be okay. I guess that the pessimist or the cynist in me is like, I feel like we've stretched beyond that point and they won't make it possible without bad things happening. Unfortunately, in my view, but see, you have to watch yourself, Johnny, right? Because it's very easy for us to go from doing nothing and having a reason to doing nothing and having a reason. The bottom line is what is each one of us doing every single day in our lives, in our community to make our very lives a quote unquote revolutionary act, but I will say resolutionary act, right? You saw the interaction between me and Ricky Valdez on the side of the road. Just one interaction with one man can change a lot going on here, right? Not only in that man and ourselves, but in the system and in, in the souls and spirits of all the other men and women who are watching, right? We can get inspired overnight. We can start to live this. I know a lot of folks who are, and it's easy to fall into that place of, again, not doing as much as we could because we've looked at the field and say, well, there's no way we can do it. We're just one person. When you get into this and start talking to people, you realize this is the only thing on everybody's minds right now. And the only folks who it's not on their mind are people who are completely unconscious and seem to almost be, uh, um, set up to be that way in a sense. They study folks and say a lot of these folks don't have their own internal dialogue and their own imagination. They can't talk to themselves and imagine a way out. For folks who do have that ability, that's the one thing that's going to take us out of here because we don't even have to imagine it. We just have to study history and learn its lesson and become actors on the stage, right? So being an actor on the stage, how much success have you had in court with, with all the uh, the alter, altercations you've had with police? Or does success is re- success is sort of relative to to how you define it, you know, in the sense of to me, if I'm able to continue to get my property back and get it back, you know, easier or lose less money every time or notice that people are taking more interest in what I'm saying, it's like any other journey, right? We call it practicing law, practicing medicine, practicing spirituality. As time goes on, you learn more. Therefore, you just you know, inherently get better at what you're doing and you get more results, right? It's, it's anything that you do. So what I find is, you know, I take the position of these folks are my best teachers through darkness and suffering in order to give me what I need. If I want what I need, then I have to be that. The only way I'm going to be that is by pushing my comfort zone and rising to the occasion and meeting the challenges of life on life's terms. So I don't view any of this as a negative thing, as a victiming thing, as a disempowerment. I view it quite the opposite. It's making me and has made me who I am and who I'm becoming. And yes, I do see more results as time goes on and I do develop more remedy and ability to deal with these folks. So I guess what I'm like when you're in court, like out of all the situations, I don't go in court. So I don't go in court. So all the traffic stops that you've been in, it's never resulted. So you don't even show up to court type of thing. No, because they're not summoning me, the man, right? The word summoning is a spiritual connotation. It's a dead entity. They're summoning me to appear in person, right? So it's an all caps name. They never once asked for Paulie, the man to show up. They're putting out a call to the dead world saying we summon uh, the all caps uh, entity to appear in person. If I was to walk on in there, I've now told them that I am that entity. Now they can drag me around the room because they can apply statute policy and code to me. If I'm going in there, it's I'm going to be dragged in there. And then I can make it clear. I'm not here by my own volition and I will not appear as the person. This will have to be some form of special presentment, right? But a man or woman can never appear. Only an entity can appear. Man and woman can present. So I present through paperwork, through mail, certified communication. They give me an offer. I give them a counteroffer. 
right? And I'll, I'll give you kind of a line from, what was it, Godfather, uh, I believe. My offer is this, Senator, nothing, right? If you want me to appear, you're going to pay me $10 million to appear like I would appear as anybody else, you know, whatever that going rate is that I feel it's worth to me. But other than that, I have no obligation to appear as anything other than man or woman. And if I was to, I would present. And why would I waste my time and energy going down somewhere at nine in the morning to present when I can do that on paper through mail and continue on with my life, right? All this thing operates through fear. What's going to happen if you don't show up? You, I mean, that's a valid point. And I feel like a lot of people probably don't even know that, that you can do it through paperwork and through, you know, correspondence and everything like that because of the fear-based system where it's like hey you have to be here or else you know what I mean like do this or you get the rod kind of thing sure and that's again what keeps us all going and that keeps everybody from even looking at what's actually happening it's words and terms and contracts it's securities and obligations it's banking the judge sits on a bench he's a bencher bench in latin means bank he's a banker this is all banking and now let me give you another one. You walk into court. Oh, hey, uh, you appeared in person. Great. So this is you, right? Uh-huh. Okay, so now statutes, policy, and code applies to you. You know who that guy is over there, that agent? Well, he's the people. So now you just appeared in person, which in U.S. code means a corporation. That corporate entity just appeared as the people. Guess who the ones with all the rights and beneficiary and power in this realm are? The people. So they got you appearing in person, playing one of them, an actor, and they're appearing as the people playing man and woman. That's how they drag you all around the court. When you express yourself as the beneficiary, the trust, no, hold on a second. You all are agent and agency. You're all public service corporation. You're the persons here, right? You've all put on some kind of garb and regalia and appeared as a person, a corporation, an actor, an entity. I am man and woman. You will serve me here today. It's a completely different turnaround and expression of what we've been taught. And it's all again, by design, they don't want man and woman walking in there, or I'll go back to the spiritual principle. The, the most high desperately wants man and woman to walk in there and present themselves honorably and righteously, but we won't seek that path and do what it takes and know what we need to know and, and sit in the courage of standing on that truth. Right? So, you know, this thing will continue and it should continue because the only folks who are entitled to rights and freedoms are man and woman who presents themselves in a righteous fashion. So I'm, 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 do you have something, Jesse? I'm just almost confused. I had a bunch it. of stuff. I'm just trying to. Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> this is this is some shit I've never heard before, bro. This is some shit I've never heard before. So I'm so, just trying to collect it. I'm, I'm, even right off the bat, there's some things that I don't even agree with, but it's it's just it's just a lot right now that I'm just trying to place. But yeah, for sure. So I guess for, for me, I'm trying to come up with a good question for me, uh, I think I asked you a little bit earlier, like, how did this how did we even get to this point? And, and was the, the United States Constitution and, and you do use that, right? The Constitution and, and some of your inst- or in some and, and how you present things or like our rights or uh, I guess what I'm trying. I'm to- not a party to it. I'm not a party to the Constitution because I didn't sign it. Right. They're not parties either until they swear to it. So I will use it to bind them. Like one of the servants said to me the other day when they took my property, he kept saying, well, we can't do this and that. We're bound by Arizona revised statute. I said, yeah, you are. All codes, policies, and statutes are corporate law. They only apply to agent and agency as per the Declaration of Independence. They also apply to folks who contract in. It's known as the consent of the governed. So politicians will talk about the unspoken contract, right? So folks in this realm just haven't really ever understood. Statute, policy, and code is only given the force of law through the consent of the governed, which means you have to contract in. If you don't contract in and you understand status and standing and you don't give up your rights, then they have no ability legitimately under the law to move those obligations and securities on you. Okay. That that kind of clarifies what my question was then. Now let me give you another little piece. I don't mean to cut you off. Let me just give you another little piece before I forget it. So every one of these folks are supposed to be officers of the United States in the sense of the contiguous United States, all the states that have unified under that constitutional contract. These folks are not under that. So by by virtue of the fact that the U.S. Code says impersonating an officer and these folks are municipal third party corporations, you've never met a police policy enforcement officer who's actually a representative of the executive branch. They're all third party corporations forcing securities and obligations on the side of the road, which is a violation of federal law. 
So most folks don't understand this. These are not government agencies. These are not government agents. They're actually impersonating United States government officials. They are third party municipal policy enforcement corporations who only have duties and obligations to those who contract in. Everyone else that they're forcing this on who does not consent, they're violating like, you know, five to 10 federal laws at a time when they do this stuff. Most folks are unaware of it. I've always believed in something similar to that. You just brought it a lot deeper than, than that as far as corporatized uh, police agencies. Like I've, I've, you know, hearing that, like I, I, I've heard that before, which I'm completely on board with, but not to that level. I, I haven't heard that. No, we've all talked about it, about we'll how their business and they're privatized and, you know, the way they get money from people that, for fines and stuff just runs their own pension and runs their own profit and everything They're, I mean, they're a, a corporate bully is did, like literally their job. Did, did you have like a mentor that you got this, this like deep of information from or like, so, uh, was so this I've just a bunch of, no, no, you're go good. Ahead. You're good. Any, any mentors, any, any yeah. mentors in your life that kind yeah, of brought you, I've brought had you a bunch of people along the way. Uh, Carl Lentz would be one of the more uh, notable names, but there's a bunch of people who I, I counsel with and confer with. And again, a lot of this stuff is just about going back to U S code, United States code. And then again, understanding that still United States code only applies to everybody under that organization. Because again, on paper, there's two different United States. There's United States, all caps, which is a corporate body. And then there's the States, right? The unification of the States, the land, See, there's two states in every state. There's a state of, I'll give you the example, Arizona state and state of Arizona. Each state has two senators. So there's a body that controls the land and there's a body that controls the corporate body, the body politic, right? So the, the, the land itself is subject to, to the law, what's lawful. The corporate state is subject to what's legal. So they'll stop you and say, hey, in the state of Colorado, all caps, you're not in anything. You're on the land. It's word games. So they get you to agree you're in the state of something. I'm only in the state of, of seeking truth, right? I'm in the state of balance and centeredness. I'm not in a state of anything called Colorado. But if they say that to you and you accept that you're in a state of Colorado, you now become part of the metaphysical corporate body. And then you agree to it all on paper with contracts. Oh, license, registration, insurance, and plates. Those are all contracts where you've joined with that corporate body, and now you're subject to be regulated through statute, policy, and code. See, most folks think driving is a privilege. Driving is a commercial term. Moving your property and traveling is a right. So I, I actually, my bad, or you? I'm just, just real quick, and I don't know if you know the answer to this, and I'm sorry. This is, how did we even get to this place? And how did we even get here in the first place? Because for me, I know it's that it might, it might be it might be a stupid question because it's like, what does it matter if you look back in the past and why it's happening right now? But I feel like if we don't get to the root of the cause, then history will repeat itself like everyone says it does. Um, it's very simple. People don't understand right from wrong and what their rights are. It's a spiritual thing first. Therefore, Shatan, what I call Shatan, the agents of darkness, come in and offer everybody benefits and privileges. One of the most scary terms they say you can hear is hi, I'm from the government, I'm here to help you. Because folks either can't make it or choose not to make it or by a, a set of situations and circumstances, they're offered benefits and privileges through contract unknowingly and contract out their rights for these benefits and privileges, right? So it's what we know as fascism. Fascism is defined by the person who came up with it as the merger of state and corporate powers, right? It's when corporations start to team up with the state and then you start getting a whole bunch of money and power and therefore absolute corruption. And folks start forgetting about who and what they are, what their role is, what rights are. It all just becomes about like in scripture, serving that, serving that mammon and that molech, right? And you turn around one day, 50, 100, 200 years in, your whole society's reprobate because everybody's looking for a check and nobody inherently knows right from wrong, can't explain it and won't live it. So let me ask, and I'm probably, I'm probably skipping ahead a bit here and going towards something that I was gonna focus on at the end of the podcast, but it just seems important to me right now with what you've said. How do you, what is your advice to someone who wants to do like what you're doing? And I don't mean as, I don't mean as far as what you're doing. I'm not talking about YouTube or recording or anything like that. I mean like someone who wants to stand up for what they believe in and someone who believes in these things and looks into it and does the amount of research you've done and stuff like that. Because no matter what, at the end of the day, no matter how correct you may be about it, 
The police are still going to harass you. They're still going to arrest you. They're still going to do what they do. How do you help people get through that uh, difficulty? Or what would you recommend for people for themselves to get through that difficulty? Because it's going to happen. Like, let's say, oh, I want to drive around without plates. I don't want to have a, li- a, a driver's license. All these things. Because I truly believe in it. And this is what I want to follow. And this is the path I want to live. And I want to teach other people these things. But now I have to deal with the suffering and the difficulty and the harassment. What is your best advice? Because I know that from what you've said, you've dealt with it yourself. Well, yeah, first you have to identify if this is a want or a need. You know, if you need to be free, if you need to have your rights secure, then you have to come to a conclusion that some things you need are worth sacrificing for, right? Like the old cliches, the old movies, you know, man's got to do what a man's got to do. Some things got to be worth dying for, so to speak. So that's how I reconcile all this. If we're not willing to give everything up, we will not have access to everything. We will have access to limits and limitations set by other people. So I want to be non-self-limiting. I want to be unbound, fluid, and dynamic. I want to be secured in my rights and freedom and my destiny. And therefore, the children, right, I don't like that word, but we'll use it for the colloquial sort of conversational sense. Um, the children have to have a destiny secured for them within rights and freedoms. If we want that to happen and exist, we have to put up or shut up. There's no, it's basic cause and effect. It's universal law. There is no uh, space for the realized, actualized man to waver, right? Because we understand what comes with that. That's a good, I mean, it's true. It's a hard truth to eat. I feel like it's a hard, you know, I mean, we, we talk about comfortability and how hard it is to... Oh, yeah. We've had multiple podcasts about, you know, like, are you willing to, you know... And I don't want to use the word martyr, but are you willing to either be a martyr so for what there, you believe in or be a... Was there ever, know, When did you find out that you needed... That, that it was more of a, a need than a want? Learning history was part of it. You know, you have people who fought and died in multiple wars by the time they were in their 20s in order to secure what we take for granted today. The only reason we can sit here and talk like this, and a lot of states you know, or land still have guns that aren't completely regulated and still have some rights and freedom is could other folks in the past put up for us, right? If we won't put up for ourselves, we will not be guaranteed a place in that quote unquote kingdom of heaven, right? The same way the being that we started a whole society off of, we see a lot of people who worship and venerate, but we see very few who want to live that lifestyle, which is all that being came here to teach. You, you don't need to worship a Christed being. You need to become Christed in your consciousness, understanding universal law and living that if you want access to the kingdom of heaven. If not, we will create a living hell for ourselves on earth, like we always do. I mean, it's the same thing throughout all times and all places. It's these same themes that keep coming up. How do you how do you talk to individuals about like expressing so like talking to me right now, who is not a religious person, who is actually like more anti religious than anything else? like separation of sure. church and state and all that. Do you um like like do you say the same thing trying to explain that to them like is the spirituality aspect of what you're talking about the governing um uh, body that's in head like that's necessary this connection within spirit cuz I I I just like tone it down to like morality. Like everybody knows morality. I, you, you know what I mean? Like I'm I'm just trying to gauge that with you like like is that an absolute necessary yeah, you, thing the the spiritual aspect that you keep bringing up i yeah, probably I mean, worded that horribly I mean, to me to me no that that makes sense to me it absolutely would be the next step because again we understand it's all about words and terms describing meaning you one would say a lot of folks when they hear me say i am anti-religious because religious has two meanings religare means to bind the hands it also means to reunite with source So majority of religions, you should be anti-religious because they're trying to bind your hands. There's a few spiritual concepts and understandings that are eternal truth that do not change throughout the ages. Those are reuniting with source, right? Source is just truth, care, like you said, logic, objectively, morals, ethics. So you need to have a principle, something higher and beyond yourself that you serve in order to keep self from shrinking from challenge and fear because flesh always wants to shrink from consequence. Right. If you have a principle that is beyond that, then you just shoot for that. And everything else uh, after that is is part of the, the, the walk and the consequence and the journey. So if you if you can use morality and serve that ultimately, and that allows you to create a space within yourself where you're unwavering, 
then absolutely use that too. But for me, again, it's about words and terms and meaning and connecting all the dots. If I can bring a person who understands objective logic, morals, and ethics, the understanding of true religare, spirituality, reuniting with source consciousness, they will no longer view religion the way they've been taught to view it. Because make no mistake, we've had the well poisoned when it comes to spirituality on purpose. All of our religious practices in the world that we go to are abominations and hypocrisies, just like the man in scripture fought against. He said, come out of the church, my people. You are the temple. The temple is right here, right? The unification of thoughts, emotions, and actions is the true sacred trinity. That being was teaching mind science first, right? So that's how I bring it to somebody who, you know, is is more, I don't want to say worldly, but rooted in a sense in their body and in the world, right? That's how I bring it to them, is it's a unification of thoughts, emotions, and actions that create your world and the world around you. If you waver from those principles, you will see the results and they will be undesirable. So it's either you want a desirable life or an undesirable life. Man, I don't, I don't want to go. One that feels good, one that's esteemable. I don't want to go. I don't want to go too off track because I, I know that you were on something that Paul wants to hear more as far no, no, as like the actual government. So you're I'm good. I'm just curious about this and your opinion on this. So I'm assuming that you believe in a god. In the sense of a force, a, a consciousness, a creator a function, you know, in the sense of this being a simulation that appears to be chaotic but is actually filled with order and purpose and meaning and law. I believe there's a creational aspect there. There's an order, but okay. I don't subscribe to this anthropomorphization of what God is. It's a he, it's a she, it's nameable. None of that, right? Do, would you define yourself more of like a deist then at that point? No, no, because no. I don't have a deity that I can point to and say, this is God. I think that's folly. The Tao talks about it four or 5,000 years ago. The Tao that can be named or told is not the eternal name. But like, so we, we'll never know who and what. God is, but you can that, be it, right? The Tao says you can't know it, you can be it. But that that's kind of what like deism is, is that there 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 is definitely a possibility of a higher power, but there is no representation of him. Like like do you think that God is like hard nosed and like Ten Commandments kind of kind of stuff from the Bible that like this is how you need to live your life to be an authentic human being? Is, is there like that level think, of entity that that's that's involved I, with us? Yeah, I think that the commandments are a story and a takeoff of an understanding that we can all come to, which is that we don't have a right to do certain things. And really, it all boils down to, I kind of like the way Mark Passio brings this understanding, it all boils down to don't steal, right? But lying is stealing. You're yeah. taking the truth out of the situation so people can't make an informed decision. Killing is taking a life that doesn't belong to you. Taking property is obviously stealing. It's taking something that doesn't belong to you. Absolutely. So the majority of of, of our lesson in life, it seems to be that this is a, almost a place we come to, to learn one overarching lesson. Don't take what's not yours. Don't do what you don't have a right not to do. Right. And that's why well, then we get into the idea of eating meat and it being another karmic cyclical simulation of us. We on? Oh yeah, we're on. We're good. I hate that man. That just ruins fucking momentum and shit. We'll, we'll be all right. We'll yeah. be all right. We'll yeah, yeah. be all right. So basically, to start it back off, what I kind of wanted to get it to is, is there this necessary thing that has to be in spirituality or religion connected to government? Is that a necessary thing uh, to, to have happen for this cohesive, uh, like, good government, government to, to people experience like religion is necessary or spirituality what what you keep saying is necessary i know i'm giving well, you a shit well i feel like and i don't want to i don't want to put words in your mouth paul but i feel like he kind of mentioned it when he said that the whole like it like spirituality help but if you're able to do it based purely off of morals like good for you but there is that further connection there as well once again, I'll let you answer. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Yeah, but sorry. I, like I, I know I'm asking bland questions now, trying to get it started back. But. Yeah, this idea of this idea of if you can separate um, what looks like time, space, and and illusion, what I consider to be illusion, and you can come to a oneness understanding of consciousness and see yourself as a version of all other selves that exist and have existed. That's part of the the idea of what spirituality is right is is it's levels to it one of them is empathy um it's compassion it's faith uh, it comes from from knowledge of self again because if a being could do better and knew better they would do better right so we 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 condemn these folks because they know not what they do they're destroying themselves their society and their families and the future of their country so 
through understanding cause and effect and knowing history and learning the mistakes and therefore not repeating them, we can see that overarching connection to who we are as opposed to when we study, you know, like the cliche, Nazi German society or Maoist China or the Russian Revolution. We look at all these, uh, you know, we go back to, to, to the Roman Empire, we go back to Egypt, you know, at all places, at all times throughout history, there's one overarching theme in consciousness and awareness going on is who, who and what are we as individual men and women? How do we relate and connect? And how do we create a world for ourselves that is desirable? And you can't do that absence of response ability and accountability. And those things, again, can only be taken on by a being who has a certain level of self-empowerment, self-worth, and self-esteem. Folks who accept less for themselves, consciously or subconsciously, they have low self-esteem. Therefore, they have insecurity. That manifests in so many ways in our life. There's financial security, there's governmental security, right? Like you'll say, national security. You use all these words and terms that point to a space that has to be achieved through each individual self coming together. It can't be achieved by an external body, belief system, force, right? It has to be something that works through us that we create. And there's a, a state of mind science and understanding it's psychology and sociology. It has to take place a certain way for us to get to that certain place. And then when it doesn't take place that way, we see every time, right? Human beings only do like the Tao talks about the 64 things and the 10,000 things or the 64 ways and 10,000 things. It's a way of saying, there's 10,000 things here, it's all governed by the all. And then there's a way we do so. We do it this way or that way. There's only X amount of ways. And all throughout history, it shows when we do it this one way, we get these results. A society based on rights, freedom, self-government, self-empowerment, uh, strong men, right? They'll use these archetypes of strong men. When we get that cycle of strong men create good times, good times create weak men, weak men create hard times, that's the demoralization, the degradation and disempowerment of each really man and woman, but it's, it's typically the man, right? What you see in society is the absence of strong men breeds uh, corruption and absolute power to come in. And therefore we see the women and children have to be uh, genocided is what it is. I don't mean to be harsh, but that's what happens throughout history is we wind up watching our women and children be genocided and put into camps and prisons because we've ceased to be strong men till it was too late. So do you, then we get revolution, right? Complete circle. That's a heavy destruction and creation of new society. So do you believe that that human beings are, are inherently greedy? Like, is that something that we're, that it's just no matter what human beings will always be greedy. Are we able to fight against that? Or is that just something that's in the propaganda machine that's put, that's pushing that type of thing onto us? It's not even greedy, but man, you're just so self-involved evil, you know, and you well, just lack saying, of empathy, lack of empathy. Well, you, <laughs> you, look, you, know. you look at where we're at today and we say, we don't want history to repeat itself. And we've had on the, on the podcast multiple times. We just say, no matter what we do, we'll never have a utopia. And I'm not advocating for a utopia, but human beings are always going to be greedy. And I, I'm just curious with what you just said there, Paul, is, is that something, is, is greed, is, is that something that's taught to us or is that something that's instilled in us? I think that it's, it's partially a product of the flesh, the, the meat suit that we take on, the nature of what it does. It, it, it tries to give us signs and signals and connections and a lot of times it does so for our own protection, but we misread it. So it's a, it's a lifestyle experience where you go, okay, I'm a greedy person. I'm always clutching and grasping. I always want more, more, more. How has that served me in my life? Folks who live like that tend to not be happy. They may have stuff, but they're not happy. They don't have true love in their life. They don't have a flow, right? We talk about this flow state. The flow state is preferable to the state of neuroses, insecurity, constantly clutching and grasping. See, now we're, we can move over to sort of the Middle Eastern idea of observing the self and watching the self and what it does, and then not doing that any longer, right? We suffer majority in our mind, in our desire, in our wants, rather than in reality itself. Because what I find to be the subtle thing is oftentimes our wants and our desires are connected to unfulfilled needs. If we would fulfill our needs, ironically enough, we wouldn't find ourselves uh, uh, wanting and desiring so many other things because that itch hasn't been scratched, right? We see it kind of in the cliche modern day world. You have so many men who have the car, the woman, you know, all of their access to the things they need and resources, but they've not touched that 
true resource, that source consciousness. So therefore they go unfulfilled, empty in these shallow relationships, propelled by materialism, and they never find true fulfillment, meaning and purpose or love in their life. That's not an accident, right? You don't find love, you create it. It's a product of who and what you are, just like rights and freedoms. I real quick want to, and I'm not going to ask the question. I kind of want to bring I, this to no, you, No, and Jesse. I love that shit, by the way. Like, I don't, I don't agree. Like, the spirituality thing, get, man, I, you, you talk really fucking well, by the way. You, you, got, you got some good shit to say. <laughs> I, I want to do the spirituality. No, no, is because that though, Jesse, no, no, right? no, because that's the thing. Yeah. What I'm talking about is mind science. That's the original ancient wisdom and spirituality. That was what was taught. Say, I think your definition women. of spirituality, Jesse, is different. That like you're yeah, getting, yeah, no, you're getting so, caught on the word. May, maybe. So, so my, my shit really changed. I'd like me personally, I'm not going to give you my fucking background story, heavily religious family or whatever. Okay. Didn't, you know, didn't get into religion at all. But then I fucking, I, I had a psychedelic experience and felt this connection that that's honestly like lasted me like through my entire life. And don't get me wrong. Like it's, it's faded over time and shit. It's really intense in the moment, but having the feeling that we're all interconnected and that we're all in this together kind of thing. And that there is like, it's real happiness comes from creating happiness in other people kind of, kind of stuff. Like, I I don't know. I I love hearing. It's part of that idea that. that suffering anywhere is suffering everywhere. You can't expect to be truly fulfilled and quote unquote happy in a world where suffering, degradation, and disempowerment exists all around you and is mostly by choice. It's mostly by selves choosing that because either they don't know any better or they refuse to do better because it takes work, it takes effort, it takes response ability. You have to have the ability to respond to life on life's terms. That means you have to take on challenges, right? A lot of folks want to create money so they can throw money at all their challenges and they wonder why they got lawyers doctors, fake priests, and all these other organizations running their lives and their principles and their ethics because they've thrown money. They have believed they bought into the cliche that money can buy happiness, right? We see these themes all throughout movies, all throughout media, all throughout the teachings, uh, throughout history. There's one way, right? We go back to the truth, the life, and the way. The Tao also means the way to the way. You could go from one end of the earth to the other 3,000 years apart. The teaching is still the same. Because man and woman has always been still the same, right? There's one group of beings that the, the Christ had being cursed in the scripture was lawyers and bankers, two, two groups of beings. Lawyers and bankers are running our world today, and they are trying to crucify the Christ of consciousness. There's no way around that dynamic. And we are doing it, the mob spoken about in scripture, choosing Barabbas over and over again, rather than the Christ did light and consciousness, turning away from the light. Who, who is Barabbas? All throughout history. Who is Barabbas? That name Barabbas sounds familiar is, to me. Barabbas is the archetype. The way I describe it is the archetype of the corrupted one. It talks about in the scripture the being who they brought them both out of jail. They had the Christed being in a cell, right, for standing on truth and rights. Ironically, I, I see a lot of this and, walk and he got let go. And he got yeah, let go, so right? They brought him yeah, out. I remember that now. That's yeah, they brought that. him out in front of the mob, and they said, they said, well, let Same the mob Barabbas. choose, and that's an idea of demosocracy. And we're in that now. Demosocracy is mob rule. That's what it means in Latin. So they bring the two archetypes out, and the mob chooses every time Barabbas. Give us Barabbas, they shout with one voice. The Joe Bidens, the Donald Trumps, the Henry Kissingers, all of the, you know, again, I'll give you the other idea of the archetype. The Wizard of Oz. I love that one so much. You have someone who doesn't have a mind, someone who doesn't have a heart, and someone who doesn't have courage. Following the yellow brick road, right, the materialistic yellow brick road to the wizard, who's going to teach them all about who and what they are. But when they get there, it's some utant behind a, a, a curtain hiding himself using screens and smoke and enchantment and power to try to deceive everybody through fear. They give you the game over and over again. I could take you to the Wizard of Oz 50 to 100 years ago. I could take you to the Matrix. It's the same themes over and over again. They're trying to give us the game and wake us up, but we want to watch Monday Night Football. <laughs> So, so has there ever been a time that within your own research, has there been a time in human history where we've came close to doing or we, we've came close to responsibility? Has there been a time more, more so, and obviously we're not even anywhere close right now. Paul and his focus on history, yeah. always with the history. Have, have we, has there ever been, in your opinion, a point in time where we've all been more together as opposed to what we are now? Golden ages, golden ages. When you so read you, and talk about golden ages, that's what that is. It's, it's through that cycle of history that we, we go to these points and, you know, through the darkness, like Rumi said, the crack is where the light enters. 
You know, we go to, to Batman, uh, Dark Knight, and they talk about this dynamic. You know, Bane being necessary evil, raised in the darkness, formed by it, right? Because the folks have become so reprobate that evil now has to come in to do what it does, to teach folks how to live back in a golden age. So yeah, when we talk and read about golden ages, those are times in history where folks get the point and they start to live it because at some point in their direct life or, or shortly uh, in the past, they've experienced complete darkness, disempowerment, degradation, and they're not willing to accept less for themselves anymore. That's all the precondition is. You know, it's that Phoenix ideology. You have to crash and burn to rise higher. Again, they give us the game over and over again in different forms. So society's in the, pr in the process right now of crashing and burning so it can rise higher. So in, in your opinion then, and I actually agree with that, like wholeheartedly I agree with what you said about, and it not being one specific time in history, but during multiple ages and it being a cycle of things. But then, so just your personal opinion, do you think it's possible for us to achieve like an everlasting golden age or like an or enlightenment we, or, or like are an we enlightenment. doomed i don't want to use the word doomed but i can't think of a better word right now are we like eternally destined to go through the multiple stages to go through the golden age and the dark age and the bad times the good times like or do you think it's possible to just stay in the golden age if we were to achieve that i think that all is is mind and mental and spiritual and choice based so i think that anything is possible I also think it's very well possible that it is a product of this simulation in this arena that in order for it to all exist in harmony, the night needs the day, right? The yeah. light needs the darkness. Yin and the so yang. I come back to this yin yang of it's possible that, you know, that's just part of the, the arena here and the simulation and the process. The question is, you can always come here and choose to create your own box and opt out and do the will rather than your own will. And, and, and transcend the experience, right? So for folks out there who are caught in this, well, we're in a dark age and it's, it's part of the cycle and we may not be able to get out of it as a collective, yes, but you can create your own reality and be response able and account able for self. And you can you know, use that word and that truth and that meaning and that purpose to create, like I said, a box and a golden age, so to speak, in your individual life and cycle. We may have to. That's the Christ did walk, right? The Christ did being was creating a golden age and a lifestyle for himself and others and had to eventually be crucified and, and go through those times just like everybody else. But again, when, when it's time to be stand, when it's time to stand to be counted and it's time to deal with the consequence of what we've done and not done, I will be able to stand there and say, I know who and what I am and what I've done and not done. And that again is a freeing space. Right. It's an eternal space. You can never take that from me. And then we can speculate on what comes after this. Right. So what are you like, interested whenever you have conversations with cops and, and I, I know that these aren't the types of I mean, these aren't what we're talking about right now isn't how you present yourself to police. But in, in, in kind of in a way it is in they're, they're not taught to, to hear something like that, nor deal with it. So like. What are most of your interactions like with cops whenever you have these conversations? I know a lot of them are on YouTube and you do post those and I've seen quite a few of those, but I'm sure there are some ones that haven't been or earlier ones that were never, you know, you never recorded. What is it like to have these interactions with cops and what are, what are most of the times, what are, how do, how do they respond? It's like any other interaction with any other being, right? These are men and women first. So if the being has not completely obfuscated their self and their light, you can reach in there and you can touch that spirit. And there is that oneness there. I've ran the gamut of experiences from completely egoic folks who built up that false self. And even if I could touch that light and that spirit inside of them, they're not willing to look at it, feel it, or, or, or co-create from that place. I've had other beings who completely drop their mask, their persona, right? Again, we're back to person. Person in Latin means mask. They drop their personality. We get back to true self. And I've had servants tell me going from arresting me to weeks later saying they want to learn scripture with me and that they're going to serve me. And that anytime I come to that building, that my will will be done because they know who and what I am and what I'm there to do. And their whole role in this life, in this realm is to serve someone like me. And that's not an egoic statement. So it runs the gamut, man, like anything well, else. Explain that one, how that, you know? how that has nothing to do with your ego. That, that sounded like, like water that down a little bit or, or explain that a little bit more thoroughly about how you have servants. Sure. So when man or woman presents himself as the steward of the land, right? Man and land are synonymous. 
I am a representation of who and what you're here to upkeep, maintain, and to serve, and to service. You only exist because man and woman created you, right? Who creates? Controls. So man and woman created governments and corporations. We contracted them and bonded them to an understanding and an agreement. Therefore, they are by default servants of man and woman, right? Our, our, our countrymen. Uh, they are regulators of citizens, right? Okay, but but I was talking about like specifically like like you were talking about like you do you like legitimately have servants like like people follow you that hard and you you call them servants and shit. Well, that's the thing. They're not really serving Paul. They're serving what works with me and through me, which is an essential characteristic of a desirable society. So they recognize when I present that I'm not on a trip of getting what I want. I'm here to get what we all need. So when you can touch that part of them, they become, you know, by definition, in essence, even just man or woman, right? If you were to see an interaction between a man who has stepped into his power and a woman, a woman has no problem, in a sense, becoming a servant. And I don't mean that like, you know, she's going to necessarily do whatever I, I say to her and have power over. I'm saying there's this inherent desire and, and attraction and want to serve. We see it in a lot of different areas. A doctor. A doctor may do a lot of his work based on hierarchies, uh, charity. Hierarchies right? exist in everything. So you're just talking about like you're just a little yeah. higher up in the, in the hierarchy as far as what goes. You consider yourself a guru so, or, or anything of I that nature? I, I think you're looking my, at servant the I wrong way. But yeah. Talking to yeah, you. I don't, yeah. consider my, I don't consider myself anything other than a man who is seeking truth and on a journey of self-realization and self-actualization and self-empowerment. So in order to be self-empowered, I have to understand roles, right? So one of the roles of a public servant and a being who takes on an oath to serve the country is that when man or woman shows up, just like in a corporate capacity, when the consumer shows up, are you not my servant? When I sit down, like I'm not saying I have a negative connotation to that. See, this is part of ego. Folks who have a negative connotation to servant are not fit to serve. See, all I do all day is serve. So therefore, I have no problem stepping into the role of being service because like a business owner, I serve all day long. And when it's time for me to have my my steak, right, even though I don't eat meat, that person has now become my servant. They're there in a role, right? I'm the consumer. They're the servant. The same interaction takes place when I walk into a government establishment because I am the government. I'm the people. So by definition, by default, you're all in the in the role of service provider, right? And And, and I don't. I don't get egoic with that because, like I said, I've done DoorDash. I've done service all my life in different forms. This is just a different form of service to self and others. I got you. I got you. I just wanted to elaborate a little bit. Sure. No, I like that stuff. I like the whole idea of, you know, keep me accountable. Keep me responsible. Get into who and what I am and what makes me tick. Bet me. Make sure that I'm not on some power trip. I like all that, man. Because anything, like, like over time, like if – if corruption is an option over a long enough period of time, it, it will become corrupt. That's almost like the same thing you were talking about as far as cycles go, which is what I talk about hierarchies. Like governments get overthrown, new new people get put in power, uh, better government gets put in place. Well, eventually human beings were really good at this, finding a way to, in general, human beings are really good at finding a way to exploit it and then corrupt it, and then it goes to shit again, the same way that you were talking about a cycle. So it's just, it, it's almost we like could. this inevitable thing with humans. I even brought this up with Crow uh, and all this, like, how do you avoid that? And he's just like, well, just human beings are kind of, you know, there is no good answer to that. But I liked what you talked about um, as far as being responsible for this in a smaller sense. And you handle that first kind of thing, which is what I think that you were talking about. That's beautiful. Like, like being, you know, being, a, handle your shit first, like be a good human being here first. That's what's most important, and then it kind of spreads out. I don't, not to put words in your mouth. That's kind of the vibe that I was getting from you, which I really liked, is, is you handle your sure, own so. things internally. Yeah, a lot of this, what you're talking about, is the idea of power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. When I understand yeah, yeah. my role in my place, which is only to be a servant of the true employee, then it allows me to, even when I go sometimes and slip, I'm vigilant enough and self-aware enough and disciplined, discipled enough to say, where am I acting out of right now? 
Am I acting out of a space of balance and harmony and service to others and therefore true service to self? Or am I acting from an egoic place? So is it possible that flesh at all times falls short of the most high? Yes. But with the principle, with the lifestyle, with the discipline, you become, I want to believe, uncorruptible. Because again, there is no amount of money or worldly power that's ever going to be more important or more powerful than the true light, right? There's false light and true light. When you understand where your true power comes from, you would never give that up because there's nothing in this world that's more powerful, more fulfilling, more meaningful and purposeful than that true light, that true power, right? All these other things are bread and circus, right? They're five sense games and illusions. The sixth sense, the true self, the true spirit, the true eternal meaning and purpose that stays static all throughout time and history is the one thing that I have to serve. If I want to have a desirable life, in and of myself. See, we're back to the beginning where we started from. I know myself enough to know that if I sink to certain places, I will never touch that happiness and that fulfillment. So I want that space. Therefore, I have to do certain things. But also, if I want my rights and freedoms, like I said, I and other men and women have to step into their power and into their role. You are king in this land. You are queen in this land. If you will not conduct yourself in that way, you will get treated like a slave. A king manifests a servant, a public servant. A slave manifests a master, right? A lot of this is what you put out is what you get back. You know, we can take it right down to the prison level. You go into a prison and conduct yourself like a coward, you're going to get taken advantage of. You go in there with self-respect, with vigilance, with discipline, with righteousness. Even if you're not involved in the underworld, you're going to get respect one way or the other. Absolutely. But I mean, that, that's, some, that's some powerful shit, man. But that's assuming that, and I hope that I'm understanding this correctly, but that, that's assuming that you have the right vision, though, right? And that what your vision is is 100% what it is. There's a piece. In, well, that's the thing. It's, it's, it's trial by fire at times, right? When you really stand on this. See, I've had situations where I've had gangsters come up to me in the middle of the night on a bus ready to rob me and ended up crying, telling me they love me. That's enough of an experience if I have that two, three, four, five, ten times to know that there's one self operating here. Everything else is persona, mask. And, and, and five cents games we play in the world. There is a truth that cuts beyond all that. That's part of why I speak with the quote unquote authority that I do, because I've had enough experiences to know and see beyond the veil, right? And that is true empowerment. So, you know, again, if you walk this, this walk and live this lifestyle and you get the results, by the fruits, you will know them. The results speak for themselves. Fair enough. And it's not from what I'm taking from this, it's not an ego thing for you because you would honestly be perfectly fine with everybody having that outlook. Like everybody taking control of their self and their own power. And like what I'm getting at is it's not an ego thing. You're not trying to be above someone in that circumstance. You're trying to enlighten them in the same way. That's folly, right? If I ever want to live in a world where they don't come from me, If I think I'm something, whatever, like people will tell me, Paul, you're empowered. You walk the walk. Folks won't do that. They'll never do that. Well, then I'm secured a place in slavery one way or the other. So we ain't going to get out of this. I ain't going to get out of this alive. And I ain't going to be able to live the rest of my days until everyone else takes on their power, their responsibility and accountability. I'm not in this to be looked up to, to make money, to be genuflected to. I'm in this to inspire other spirits and call them to action so we can co-create and change the world that we are not liking at this time, right? That's why we're all here, because there's stuff going on that we're not meshing with, we're not resonating with. Well, how are we going to change that, fellas? I can't do it all. I don't want to do it all. I don't really even want to do any of this from the beginning. I was called to do this out of necessity, not only for myself, but then for others, because it brings value, right? It brings a change. And that's what we need, you know? So, yeah, uh, we're back to the Tao. You know, the fool looks for a place amongst or, or above other people. You know, it's, it, we're back to the idea of the true wise man, the true alpha male. You can only be a true alpha male or wise male if you seek to lift up and raise up everybody with you, not to become beyond them and apart from them so you can look back and curry favor and benefit and privilege, right? That's false light. That's false power. You will lose all your true power. If you act from that space, It's like in the movies, they say, use your power for good or the power will be taken from you. I understand that dynamic, and I've seen that in my own life. When you start to slip, that power, that grace, that protection will be pulled right from you, and you'll get a little taste of the old life and the old way and the old medicine, right? And then you'll remember very quickly, oh, that's right, that's what I'm here to do. 
<laughs> Some deep stuff, man. I love it. I love man, it. and it's very philosophical. This is extremely philosophical in general, which I, I fucking love philosophy, man. I, I, I love these kind of talks. If you had to get to... An, I don't even know what like time we're at or anything like that. But if you had to get to like a bare bones, <laughs> Paul, how, how much time do you have, my man? Yeah, uh, we're good to go, man. I'll do All at right. least another. You know, we'll be thrown out again and do at least another uh, forty. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. So I'm gonna give you fucking a, zoom. I'm trying to get. I gotta like, pee. <laughs> like a really general. Yeah, I gotta t- fucking take a piss too. But I'm gonna I'm gonna run this question by you real quick. So in a more simplistic terms of um, just society in general. Just take society in general, and you got a you get a card, and that card says you get to fix one thing that's corrupted, right now. Like try to keep it general. Like like what what do you fix? It like like most corrupted shit you could possibly think of. Like what is the most addressed thing that we need to focus on right now, as like, a people like that's hindering? Yeah, in, institution wise, institution corporate. Whatever. What do we need to focus on? It has to be in the world. I can't give you the actual solution, which is that the corruption of self is what has to be fixed because all external. Yeah, that's that's super philosophical. Conditions. That's super philosophical. Tone, right. tone it down. Actually, give me like a sect, a sect of something that's happening within the government. It's, keep it to the United States. Keep it to the United okay, States. Okay. What what needs to okay. be addressed first for the betterment of of how how you view shit. Like, so like by what virtue needs to be addressed? Fact that all conditions extend from self and that my answer would originally be the corruption of self. The extension of that would be the spiritual institutions and spiritual practices. If you had a bunch of folks, you can call them a guru. I mean, there's different words to describe a, a, an understanding, I guess. I don't really like those words in terms, but if you had folks in every aspect of every uh, community, and, you know, on every land teaching spiritual principles, and spiritual understandings and mind science, then just by the nature of cause and effect, you would then have those beings going to populate these other institutions and have a basis and a principia, a principle, right? A foundation first. So each being has to be raised, right? In the mind and heart and the frequency. We don't have folks raising uh, uh, children into men and women. So the, the backbone of that, right? A lot of the You know, they'll get into the whole political aspects. I don't see any of that. Uh, There's some truth on all sides. And then there's huge lies and corruptions. But this idea of family values, spiritual values, uh, getting back to who and what we are, right? So you would have to suspect that uh, wherever folks congregate and meet and confer with each other and learn together about who and what they are and how to take that into the world, that's what I would say if I had to choose something would be number one. So like religious institutions. You're talking about the religious yeah, the, institutions. It sounds like a combo between religion and education. Yeah. Which, I mean, which it, man, I, I would have... That... Thank you, Johnny. Go ahead. Fucking Zoom's doing that stupid-ass shit again. It's got the pop-up, like, wanting <laughs> money and shit. Yeah. They're going to get it one way or the other. <laughs> They're coming for their big. No, yeah, yeah, they are, for sure. No, but I, man, I was just curious because, man, there's so many facets. Like, the more that – this is one thing I've said about doing this podcast for, like, four years. It's almost kind of like a negative, too, because you end up just finding out how shitty the world is. Obviously, you've heard the, the term ignorance is bliss. This has been a negative for me because all you hear about is how much corrupt from government to education to the religious institutions to, like, fucking Everything is just corrupt, and it's hard to come out of that and having a positive mentality like what you have as far as resolution over over revolution. And I'm just like, I, w- I was just curious, and what I always like to think of, which gives me a little bit of hope, is what it, what is, like, the first thing, because I, I believe in, like, small steps. Like, like everything happens in, like, baby steps. Like, what's the first thing we need to focus on that's more, that's the most important we need to look at as a society that, that will start a, start something, to to help it out, because I'll, I'll man, I don't I don't know I don't know if you agree with me or not, Paul, but man, the the as time has gone on, especially in the past, like I want to say like eight years, has just progressively gotten worse. For the common man is just being shit on. Government's fucking terrible. Ed, our education system's fucking awful. Like I'm, 
like the federal, like but what's every, the common denominator you know, there, Jesse? What's the common denominator in all of those institutions that are run and, by and men I, and, and I see what you're talking about. It is it's it's the individual. It's like the individual themselves and making decisions and shit, right? Is that it's where you're the, gonna? It's the fabric of society, the underlying core accepted beliefs, and the the ignored. Right, the word is ignorance. All of the things people have believed, right? If you if you will believe in absurdities, you will commit atrocities. These are cliches that always remain true, right? So we have a bunch of folks who've been taught ways. absurdities. They're, therefore, they're committing atrocities. And until we rectify self, right? We're back to alchemy and vitriol. Visit the visita interiore terra, uh, rectificando invians occultum lapidum. This is age-old understanding. Visit the interior of the earth rectify self and then in the world you will create and i'm paraphrasing essentially a kingdom of heaven so when we go back to the institution the corporate body it is only populated and made up and controlled by the individual body right the individual corpse mm -hmm. so you have a bunch of living dead corpses walking around the unbegun as the secret societies call them the living dead the zombies who never started the path of self-actualization and realization they're living from false self fear and ego when we move over into true care, the sacred feminine principle, we will do what's true and what's right, and therefore we will see a change in our communities, our institutions. See, again, this is an understanding that takes full accountability, full responsibility, and full resolution onto self, and it happens to work. Everything else is folly because we can't look into the world and switch the chairs on the Titanic and expect it not to sink. There has to be a foundational change in the citizenship right? Look at the word citizenship, relationship. The ship is full of holes. Changing positions is not going to change that the ship has been full of holes because the foundation has been corrupted. That just sounds really fucking difficult to do with the amount. How many people Absolutely. are in the United States? Like what's the population? 325 of the United million. 325 million people. You expect like this enlightenment, enlightenment of understanding and, and connection of people. And it just sounds difficult. So like how? Oh, I don't you know, expect. I'm sorry. I, 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 anything I anything worth piss. doing is piss. difficult. I gotta, I gotta piss. That's the thing. See, the man in the back just said, John. I think it was Johnny just said, anything that's worth doing is challenging and difficult. You have to go to a place where you understand there really would be nothing else for us to come here and do. You start to take on a different perspective where you thank the darkness and the challenge for making us who we are. We'll go back to cliche: adversity makes men, prosperity makes monsters. The word human in law means monster. It says sea monster. You have a bunch of folks running around who are monsters because they've had too much prosperity and not enough adversity, right? And that's why we have a lot of society run by feelings nowadays because folks have not learned how to cope and regulate themselves and conquer themselves and take their feelings, their thoughts, emotions, and actions into the world to co-create a solution to the problems that they face. They wanna whine and complain. They'll come to me, the servants and say, we have a complaint from someone. Not a claim, a complaint. It's synonymous with a nagging spouse. So we have a bunch of folks who feel these feelings and fears. They wanna complain, whine and blame others, but they never wanna take on full accountability and responsibility because the reality of it is we all create this world one way or the other in our own lives. Just by the nature of how we do business with the currency we use, the way we come in as debtor rather than rather than creditor, you know, the way we contract out all of our rights. So yeah, it's going to be challenging. It's going to take work. It's going to take the spreading of knowledge of self. But first, we're going to have to come to know ourselves and how to conduct ourselves. Again, we're back to energetic words, a conductor of electricity. We're going to have to conduct that energy and elect that electricity to create actions in the world that allow us to step back and feel good about who and what we are rather than feeling like a bunch of slaves ran and led by our fears and our feelings <clears throat> i love it man um I, we just did get another warning so i think we're we're, we're close to a, another drop off from zoom from from what i can tell fuck zoom yeah <laughs> um but i know pa paul I, I i definitely man i it's been awesome, man. I just want to kind of want to cut it here because there's a lot of information. I like to upload just one video unless I did a two-parter. Um, just it, it just seems like people's uh, attention span, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to listening to videos isn't the, the, the greatest. So um, uh, we, we can kind of leave it here. And there was I was going to say there's a lot of good stuff at the end of that too. Yeah, no, for sure. And I want people to be able to see that. So Yeah. 
Um, so, Paul, what we could do is, man, like, we can just call it because we did, I think, over an hour, right? An hour and a half, maybe yeah, close yeah. to it. Yeah. And yeah. we can then just come back. If you want to do another hour, hour and a half, two hours, if that's what's something that you want to do, we can always come back and throw it around again. You know, we got a good energy and vibe going, so I don't see why not. Dude, I mean, hey, it, I'm not opposed to that at all, man. Like this, uh, Jesse's about to have a, his first his first son, so um, he's got that coming oh. in a couple weeks. So, uh, and and Johnny's got some stuff going on too. So, some things are going to be different here in Talk Junkies for a few months. So, but what I, he's saying is the intellectuals might not be here the next <laughs> yeah. time they come around. It might not be as fun for you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm intellectual, but I mean, well, I, no, not, no. Uh, <laughs> I love you, Paul. Hey. Well, Jesse, that that see. The, the universe is giving you exactly what you need to answer that question you were asking before. What a better reason to step into your true power and your rights and your freedom other than that little one now who's going to have to take on the responsibility and accountability of the world that we create. So that's a beautiful thing, man. And, and, and congratulations on that. And, Thank you. and yeah, with faith, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to build that being and create that being into a force to be reckoned with, you know? Before we just, I just want to get this in there in case we lose you. So before we lose you, do you want to like let the let our viewers know like where they can find you on YouTube and what to look? You know what I mean? Like where to find you? Basically the plug, if that's what it's called. But yeah, I'm not, Paul yeah. on slave, man. Paul on slave. You, you search me on the on the search engine. I'm pretty much the only thing that comes up. I'm pretty much on all the platforms now. Regrettably, I have to admit, I've I've created a TikTok and Instagram. You know, Shatan has me uh fully engaged right but I, I kid but the reality of it is we use these platforms uh um to interact to create community to network and to bring uh, uh the experience to others and it's a beautiful thing man there's a lot of value and empowerment there so yeah you know throw that throw the name in there paul enslaved and whatever's going to come up is going to come up but that'll be me if you're not on itunes and spotify man check out anchor anchor will send you to like eight different platforms is what we use um, you just upload the audio and then it shoots it out to like eight or nine or 10 different platforms. It just helps spread your knowledge even more, man. And they're not even paying okay. us or anything yeah. like yeah, that. Yeah, no, no. We're, so. we're, up, we're up to 20 bucks. Anchor. Oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah. We're up to $20. Yeah. And it's based off clicks per view and all that stuff. But um, we're up Fuck, to. Fuck, bro. You need to buy me a black mile with that money. Hey, shit. I'm reinvesting all the it. money into, into Talk Junkies, baby. So <laughs> get, get out of here with that. That's it. That's it. Paul, it's been great. That's the thing, man. At some point, you turn the corner and the value that you, you create greatly exceeds those little values that you're presented with at first, right? The truth can't be uh, stopped. That energy, that inspiration, that value will always uh, take over and create what you guys need. So uh, I feel good about it. Hell yeah, man. Well, thanks for joining Talk Junkies, man. It's been a pleasure to have you on, and, and I, I, I hope to have you on as soon as possible, man. It'd be it'd be an honor again to have you on. So. Yeah, or even if it's down the line. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, even if it's down yeah. the road, yeah, yeah. three months, whatever, love yeah, to have absolutely. you back on the show. Absolutely. Oh, yep, fucking, fucking Zoom. Every time. Yeah. Honestly, that I hate to say it, that was good timing for a <laughs> Almost. It was so Zoom. close. It was so yeah. close. I was trying to get there. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Paul from Unslave. Check him out, check him out on YouTube. Like he said, he's on TikTok. He's on, on, on multiple different platforms that you can find him. I hope you guys really enjoyed this podcast. The best thing you can do for this podcast is share and like the video. Send it to everyone that you know. Um, we, we do not work extremely hard, but we do work, man, once a week for an hour. And we try to spread knowledge. We're not spreading truth or falseness or anything like that. Just knowledge, in my opinion. It's other people's opinions. It's all we have here in life is our own opinions. Um, and, and make with it, with it what you will. Um, I don't know if you guys have any lasting thoughts before I end the podcast. No, that, that was... Not really. Some, that was, yeah, I mean, no, that, that was, was so much fun. Solid. So. Hell yeah. Yeah, that was so much fun. To all our junkies out there? I try to corral the guy before you do that. I try to corral him a little bit and get like a non-philosophical answer, which is what I'm going to try to hone in on. Like, like the next time, like really hone in on something just to get like a super straight, like almost like a grounded, like, like what I want, like a CNN Fox news answer from the guy, but he'll never fucking give that to me. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try to get out of him next time. Yeah. Well, to all our junkies so, out there, yeah. stay fly and ring the bell. I took my line, bro. talked a bunch of shit on you right at the end so that's gonna be the ending to the podcast bro <laughs> i said we we basically ended it with just talking a bunch of shit on you so no i'm i'm, I'm joking I'm, I'll just throw it there. <laughs> no no it, it, it's as good as we can do with the zoom fucking bullshit man
man. Like, yeah. Skype's about to make so much money. Everybody's yeah, switching yeah, back yeah. to Skype. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Absolutely, bro. It's good talking to you.